Hello and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to show you a small derivation, you don't need to know it, but it's really, really useful, um, how we get from the kinetic theory model um, to the kinetic energy of one um, molecule gas or one molecule gas at all. Okay, so this formula is the formula for kinetic theory and it talks about the fact that you have a number of particles, each with their mass, and an average velocity in all three directions, and they will cause a pressure, okay? And what I want to do today is I want to show you how we can get the kinetic energy formula from this. So I also know that PV equals NKT, okay? So the number of molecules times by the Boltzmann constant times by the temperature. And this is actually really useful because what I'm going to try to prove you today is that kinetic energy is directly related to temperature, okay? So let's bring this about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make these two formula equal to each other. So we're going to have NKT equals a third NMCRMS squared. And very quickly, you can see that the Ns cancel. So we are literally looking at one molecule. Now I'm going to do something a little bit cheeky. Okay, and this is a trick that comes up a lot. And when, if you go to university, you'll find this in um, university lectures, or you would find this in, especially things with Reynolds numbers, if you do aerospace. There is a very naughty trick that I'm going to do right now. Okay. And I'm going to have kT equals 1 over 3 times by 2 over 2, which we equals 1. Okay, 2 divided by 2 is definitely equal to 1. M C R M S squared. Now I'm going to rearrange this uh, thing and I'm actually going to say that one, over, one third times two over two also equals kT is two over three times by a half mcrms squared. And I know that that there, half ms, that is the kinetic energy of one molecule. Okay, so I'm going to end up with, if I just move that to the other side, I end up with 3 over 2 kT equals a half m crms squared. That's a constant, that's a constant, that's a constant, that's the constant for the gas. Okay. But these things here are a constant. So I can say that T, temperature, is directly proportional to the kinetic energy there. A bit of a trick, a bit of a naughty trick, but it's how it works. Now let's do an example question here using this formula. Let's say I want to know what is the kinetic energy of krypton at 22 degrees C? I believe this has been an exam question before. So I know that 3 over 2 kT equals a half m c r m s squared. So I know 3 over 2 kT equals the kinetic energy. So I can just put that in. 1.5 times by k, which is in my data sheet. 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 times by my temperature. And this has to be in Kelvin. So that's 273 plus 22. That's going to be six point one times ten to the minus twenty one joules. So this is what how much kinetic energy one atom of kinetic uh, of krypton has. So let's do this a little bit further. If I know that one mole of krypton 
is 0.0084 kilograms. Let's find the kinetic energy of one molecule. So if I know one mole is this much, I know that in this one mole, I have Avogadro's constant worth, and also 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. So I can work out how much that one atom or one molecule of krypton is. So one atom equals, let's have a go, so it's 0 0.084 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, okay, is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. I now know the mass and I know the energy. I could work out the velocity. So 6.1 times 10 to the minus 21 is a half times the mass, which is 1.4, times 10 to the minus 26, times by CRMS squared. Okay, so 6.1 times 10 to the minus 21 divided by that answer, times by 2, and square root that equals velocity equals 935 meters per second, which is reasonable, <coughs> okay? These atoms are whizzing around very fast there. So what I've done is I have derived this formula using a bit of a naughty trick, okay? And I point it out, I, this is a standard trick. Um, you may be asked to do it, um, but it's just important that you realise that all I'm just doing is manipulating a little bit of algebra to get what I want. And this happens a lot in physics, okay? So I've worked out that temperature is directly proportional to kinetic energy. Okay, so this one here, if I look at the formula, the kinetic energy of krypton at 22 degrees C. So I know that if I use 3 over 2 kT, I can work out the kinetic energy, because the kinetic energy is the whole shebang here. And I work out for one molecule, one atom of krypton, I've got 6.1 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. And then I know that one mole of krypton is 0 0.0084 kilos. I can work out how much one atom is, and then use this formula here with the energy I just calculated and work out what my average resultant velocity is. Okay. Now this relationship of temperature and kinetic energy is really important. Okay. Oops. Because if I draw a graph here, you know, percentage, of atoms and kinetic energy. I, if I draw a graph here, here. So I've got a lovely distribution here. I've got a percent of atoms and their value of their kinetic energy here. I can tell from this graph that this one here. So we call this temperature one, and I'm going to call this temperature two. I know that temperature one must be greater than temperature two because there are more atoms at a higher kinetic energy. And I can tell by this because this is how many of them there are, the percentage of the atoms and the kinetic energy here. I can say on average, if I looked at after its peak here, there are more atoms, on average, at a higher energy than there are in T2. So this means that T1 must be a bigger temperature than T2. If I was going to use this graph to do some calculations, I would use this value up here, for this would be the average, or the CRMS value. And from that value, you could, of course, work out all sorts of, um, so it's the average CRMS, so it's the average kinetic energy. And from that, you could work out, of course, CRMS there, okay? So this is a graph that you may see, and you may be asked, going, which one is uh, a hotter temperature and why? And it is this one 
because there is a greater proportion of particles with a higher kinetic energy. And because of this formula here, you know that temperature is directly proportional to kinetic energy. Now, some of you may be wondering, why is there this distribution? Well, of course, physics isn't perfect. And all of these formulae are relying on the fact that particles, um, we're assuming all of them were the same, or all of them moving at the same velocity. And that isn't the case. However, statistically, this is what the whole idea of the statistically significant thing, this is why this, the statistically significant assumption is so important. This, we can actually relate this physics, which is from the kinetic theory model, to a real life distribution and actually verify the physics from that. So that there is finding that using the kinetic theory model to find the kinetic energy of one molecule and relating that to temperature. <laughs>